Huntech Pro is proudly brought to you by Wildebees, Magnum Archery, Orpen Weapons, Oberholzer Taxidermy, No Scent, Nat Shoot, and Gunrats. This is the first of many episodes to come where Huntech Pro and the team go on a trip dedicated to a certain species. They traveled to Mpimalanga where they met up with the Bosch Nell Safaris family for an action-packed hunting trip. Hi guys, my name is Brendan Nell from Bosch Nell Safaris. You guys might remember me from episode 10 and 11. We had a little bit of fun hunting planes game in the free state and then off to the Mpumalanga province to do a little bit of croc hunting and um, it's actually fun to say that we are revisiting everything again for another week's worth of exceptional croc hunting. We are a South African based hunting company that mainly caters for the international market. We have a lot of close friends from all over the world. We welcome back every year for some big game hunting, planes game hunting, uh, tiny 10, you know, whatever it is. Uh, we try our best to sell an experience, have a lot of fun out in the bush, hunting the wide variety of species that South Africa has to offer. So this is a special one for us, you know, getting back out there, going after one of our, or probably the most popular animal that we have on offer is the crocodile. It's something dear to us, it's something that we enjoy hunting quite thoroughly. And if I must say so myself, it's something we do very well in South Africa. It's a premier uh, destination for crocodile hunting on the borders of the Kruger National Park, which is actually ideal with all of our river systems that we have. Every year I welcome a number of hunters to, to South Africa and they chase after animals such as buffalo, lion, hippo on certain occasions. Uh, people don't realize how much fun it is to go after a crocodile because it's a it's something that flies by and people show no interest. It's not, it's not challenging, it's not exhilarating until you get on a crocodile hunt and everything changes. Our region makes it so special because it's probably one of the few areas remaining in South Africa that is truly wild, truly vast and natural, you know, without human interference. We see these animals move in and out of the areas every single day because we are we are located in one of the last wild frontiers of South Africa. And with this, you get these vast experiences, whether it's up close and personal or way out there and a long shot is necessary. Getting into a position with so many elements that can absolutely give you away, it just spoils the entire hunt, is actually part of the great challenge of crocodile hunting. You gotta keep the wind in your face because if that animal smells you people don't realize it they've got a keen keen sense of smell he's gone he's out of there he's not going to wait around on you if they see you they're gone if they hear you they're gone and if they feel you coming in they are gone you've got to move in swift you've got to move in silently without stirring the, the ground up too much there are so many vital points to consider whether it's the time of the day the position of the animal the position of the area we are hunting in, which way the wind is blowing. Because most of the time you think, oh, there's a pond. You know, the crocodiles are sunbathing outside, like in the Kruger National Park, walk up and shoot it. And people do not realize how big these, these water sources are. From the first time that I spot an animal, we can be in a position where you can take a shot at 500 yards. And to close that, the gap on that animal at the end of the day without being noticed is, is 
it looks like a boarding hunt, but in the moment it, it's exceptional because you gotta keep all of your senses sharp the entire time. I think in all honesty, we, we deliver an unrivaled experience when it comes to crocodile hunting, as can be seen in the next couple of days. Tucked away in the corner of South Africa, Mozambique and Swaziland lies our jewel of a crocodile hunting area. Equipped with African themed accommodations, hunters can expect to enjoy air conditioned rooms, hot water and a comfortable night's rest. Whether you are staying in our Swazi style huts or the tented camp, you will experience the true spirit of safari. Huntech Pro is proudly sponsored by Ultimo Group, Trigger Camp, Helber Rifles Bullets and Innovations, Glow Tech Energy, Elroy Water, Biltong Supply Company, Madeley Skeepers Optometrist, Grizzly Gear, Bebs, SSG Cases, Seek Thermal, and Nightsight. Huntech Pro's proud media partner is Game and Hunt Magazine. A deer's nose is 1,000 times more powerful than the human nose. That means he will smell you way before you ever see him. No Scent is a three-phase scent elimination system that destroys 100% of human odor. Our revolutionary enzyme formula works by fully encapsulating and by attacking and eliminating human odor particles. Our No Scent laundry pods, hair and body wash, and field spray will take 100% of the stink out of you. No scent. Hunt undetected. Eister, ons kort rauw materiaal vir een nieuwe hellebeest scammer. Kruif vir ons die volgende. Verf, eyelids, ripcord, zips, goeders wat jou bang maak. Moe nie terug in die seen. Raak rof. At Orpen Weapons, we have a dedicated team of professionals that are extremely passionate about firearms. We specialize in custom rifle building, accurizing, customization, repair and general sales of firearms and their related accessories. Each firearm receives our signature attention to detail, met with unique insight gathered through more than 50 years experience as gunsmiths. We look forward to assist you in your firearm needs. Crocodile hunting is a totally different ball game, if you ask me. I think it's one of the most underrated hunts you can go on in South Africa. There are so many factors that has to be taken into account when hunting these animals. The slightest indication of a potential threat or if they sense danger, they will dart off into the water where they feel the safest, and then it's all game over. I remember two years back when we did Johan's first crocodile hunt. The terrain was of such condition that we had to take our shoes off and stalk with our socks on, that the crocs wouldn't pick up the vibrations from walking on the ground. They are extremely sensitive to changes in their surroundings. The first day was very hot. We spent the whole day just glassing the area and working our way around each dam to try and locate the perfect size croc for me to take. Weather also plays a major role. It was full moon and it rained quite a lot the last couple of days before the hunt. 
Because of the heat, every croc that we saw was either in the water where it was cooler or just not big enough. The next two days we were unsuccessful. We didn't see the croc that I wanted to take, only smaller ones and juveniles. Getting into shooting distance on a crocodile is not your everyday task. It's typical to see that an animal is lying across the pond or wherever and it's a 200, 250 meter shot. And ideally that's not perfect shooting conditions for your first time hunter coming and hunting a crocodile because it's such a small target to go for. So I think it shows quite a bit that at some point I was a bit frustrated because we were working quite hard and the animals are simply just not where we wanted them to be, but that's hunting. The morning of our fourth day searching for my croc started with an early rise. Breden told me that normally crocodiles leave the water uh, uh, as soon as the sun is out to soak up as much heat as possible for the day. Again, we glassed each dam and working around them, hoping to spot something big. Then, just before we wanted to retire for the day at last light, Brendan saw him. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited yet surprised that we actually spot a real monster of a croc. Just mind the rocks. Stay on the grass as much as you can. We slowly started to stalk closer, trying to make as little noise as possible in the process. My heart started racing because we ended up behind the bank opposite from the croc and we couldn't see what he was doing as we closed the distance. I wasn't sure if he was aware of our presence. We finally got sight of him when we reached the top of the bank and Brendan made sure I was in range to take the shot.
It's in the middle of the neck, eh? You see the neck? Yes. It's like a block. You try and punch a hole through the middle of that block. Okay. I'd just like to thank Brendan and the Bushnell team for all their efforts and for pulling out all the stops to help me find the perfect crocodile and to get me in perfect position where I felt comfortable enough to take the shot. This was an unforgettable experience and a memorable hunt I will never forget. Once we got into range, we realized that light was fading quite fast. So at this stage, we made the call that um, it's either we go for it or we try again the next day. And at that stage, we were running out of time. So we made the call that Beulah would get on the sticks with, with the Raven and we will, we will see how it plays out. And as soon as Beulah sent the arrow, she hit the mark perfectly. That's an absolutely perfect textbook shot on a crocodile. Um, but due to the lack of light, the lack of time and the possibility of that animal um, running off, disappear, disappearing into the water, we made the call that she she needed to put in an uh, insurance shot, as we like to call it, with the rifle. Um, this is not to take away from the bow hunting experience at all. Um, we did get within bow, bow range on an extremely cunning animal. Uh, it's merely for the animal's sake and for our sake as well, because um, most people have seen this before. As soon as a crocodile heads into the water, he disappears for good. There's no, there's no tracking it, there's no trying to find it somewhere hiding. They, they can just dart down um, to their den and that's it. They disappear for good. You know, you will never find your trophy if that happened. Uh, Beulah immediately put in an insurance shot with the rifle. Um, again, hit the mark perfectly as you can see in the animal's reaction. And that was it. It was a done deal. She, she bagged an absolutely uh, phenomenal animal. Um, as you will see in the video and the pictures, truly a, a wonderful speci uh, specimen. And um, yeah, I think in the end it all turned out perfectly uh, the way we wanted it to turn out. Um, there were some unforeseen challenges, but that's just how hunting goes. At the end of the day, you adapt, you overcome, um, and that's exactly what happened on this hunt. Oberholzer Taxidermy strives to portray your hunting trophies in as realistic a state as possible. We give you a trophy that you aren't simply proud of or would like to add to your collection, but also your very own prized piece of Africa along with fond memories of our land. Hunting is an incredibly rewarding sport. Complement your prize with professional taxidermy services at Oberholzer Taxidermy. Two years ago, Johan and I, we went out on uh, an adventure to see if we can find a crocodile. And back then we did a, quite a long recap on, on shot placement, trying to inform people about where to shoot crocodiles. Since then, it's popped up a few more times why uh, we need to shoot for the neck. Um, in the classic old crocodile hunting videos, you'll see a lot of skulls being popped. Uh, most people telling their hunters to shoot for the head and what people don't realize that's a pretty tough fix uh, Once you shoot a crocodile in the head uh, the top of his skull um, basically explodes 
and it's not your typical animal that you go for a heart lung shot because people don't realize that uh, to try and camouflage himself better crocodiles are able to slightly adjust the position of um, their lungs resulting in them uh, being more buoyant in a certain point in their body than another so once you find an animal on the side which we preferably try to do um, we do instruct people to go for the middle of the neck when you follow the jawline the upside down smile a few inches back in the middle of the neck because at that stage I can't really tell you where his heart and lungs are um, so ideally there's no perfect shot on the body from there but if you break the spine you immediately uh, incapacitate that animal and you try and leave him right there on the spot without making any um, worry, worrisome damage towards the, the animal's hide. So ideally, we try our best to break that spine, the animal's right there in the spot, and you can immediately see if it's a, if it's a good shot or not. The other uh, advantage we have when we go for these neck shots is that the, br the bone structure in that area is so big that even if it's not a perfect spinal hit, the, the trauma caused by the bullet or the arrow or whatever knocks that animal unconscious for a second or two, giving a hunter the opportunity to, to quickly follow up and put in two or three more shots. So my previous crocodile I hunted with Brendan was in January. That's still in the very rainy seasons. So what happens then, the temperatures are much higher in the daytime. So the water is much warmer. The crocodiles don't need to get out of the water. So this time we plan it around in the winter months. So there are reptiles, they need to get out of the water, they need to get the, the heat from the sun, so they, they need to get out of the water to bask. So when we planned this hunt, we knew we would get better shots because the crocodiles would be basking outside. So when I talked to Brennan, I asked him this time, can I please use my 308? The previous hunt I did with my trusted 9.3, but I wanted to give my 308 a chance to look if we can can line a crocodile up with a 308. Typically you will, you will hunt the crocodiles in the morning because it will be much easier spotting them because the nights tend to get colder so they have to get out in the morning to, to sunbathe. So when Brennan told me let's go try a late afternoon session, let's see if we can find anything, I was excited because it's still a crocodile hunt so I knew we would have a challenge in front of us. You know, even a bird that is close by to a crocodile can spook it and it can go into the water. Or if there's bucks nearby going for a drink, when they see the when the crocodiles spot the bucks running away, they know there's danger, so they dart back into the water. Brendan said, "Let's give it a try and let's see if we can find a nice croc outside." We stalked up from behind the, the one dam wall and Brennan went up. He went, looked through his binos and he saw a crocodile on the other side that was more than 600 meters away from us. So you guys can get an idea how big this dam is we're hunting in. Brennan said, let's like, get back behind the dam wall and let's start our stalk towards that crocodile. We just spotted a, a fairly good crocodile, but at this stage we're trying to get in on an angle. He's, he's bathing in the sun, but we've got a bunch of impala ahead of us, so pro probably they're going to get spooked, but we'll see if we get lucky. It's uh, 
late in the afternoon and we've probably got about another hour, hour and a half left, uh, enough time left for hunting. So hopefully we get in on a good angle on this crocodile. Yeah, let's go try. You ready? Yeah. What really stood out for me was the way that we stalked this crocodile. You know, going into the dry river beds, between the reeds and stuff, coming across fresh hippo tracks. I was a little bit nervous, but I knew <laughs> Brendan knows what he's doing. They're really known for hunting the dangerous game. If it's hippo, crocodile, buffalo, lion, they, they've done it all. So um, we stalked through the reeds. Brendan looked through binos. He saw that crocodile still lying and, and basking in the sun. Brendan took out the sticks for me, I got up on him. Brendan asked me if I could, could see the crocodile clearly, he's facing away from us into the, into the dam. But this is where I started to get my buck fever, because I know the margin for error on these animals are so big. And we didn't want to shoot for the head. Just get on him. Just make sure you're able to see the neck. I see the spot. Must have shit above the shoulder. About two inches, inch and a half, two inches above that elbow. Above the elbow? Yeah. Shoot him again, shoot him again. Just behind his head, you see the mouth? See the neck? Shoot him before you see the water. Another one, another one, another one. On the back. You see his head? Punch him on the back, on the back, break those legs. Oh, this has really been an emotional roller coaster for me. You know, when I put in my first two shots, I was really certain about them. Then I saw the crocodile leaning towards the deeper side, and I was afraid that I wasn't going to lose this trophy. You know, crocodiles can dive; they can get stuck underwater be between reeds, or then you can, would never be able to recover your trophy. Brendan explained to me if there's an opportunity to shoot again, you must take it because rather take another shot before you can lose this, this once in a lifetime trophy that you can hunt with him. I can't believe the lead up was so big on this crocodile and uh, <laughs> Brendan, man, he got us within 50 yards of this. On this crocodile. Yeah, uh, to be honest with the, uh, a, a better stalk you cannot ask for <laughs> because we came up alongside the ridge of the water uh, in between the reeds, you know, cutting us and uh, looking out for the hippo. At one stage you on said, hey, watch out, there's a hippo around. <laughs> and then popped around the corner and then there it is. So uh, honestly, everything played out perfectly. We got on the sticks and uh, you unseen two two rounds down range. Um, those super hammerheads of the Sarko, they hit hard. That the crocodile knew that he was hit. So uh, yeah, now it's just to get it out of the water. Luckily, it's not an impossible task. Uh, got enough hands, so we'll get it done. <laughs> I'm so glad we got it before the sun set because I wouldn't like to go in this water with a dog time. So <laughs> Brendan, thanks again, man. No problem, yeah, good good shooting. Thanks, man. Only once we recovered this animal, I realized how big they get. These crocodiles can get up to 40 or 50 years, they really get big. And to be able to get the chance to harvest a beautiful trophy like this was a real privilege for me to hunt it with Brendan. He and his team really go out of their way to make sure you get the experience of a lifetime with him. I don't think you, you book a trophy of a lifetime with him, I think you, you book the experience of a lifetime because this is something I will really never forget.
take this. Not only do we offer big game hunting in one of the one of the country's most beautiful lost wild frontiers, we've gone and we've added a tiger fishing experience for you guys. It doesn't matter if you're a local hunter, local outdoorsman, or an international traveler. Um, you are more than welcome to contact us uh, and join us on one of these experiences. We've got tiger fishing right in our backyard. Perfectly set up with accommodations right next to the Kruger National Park or on the river itself. Um, perfect setups on boats. We've got we've got the rods, we've got the reels, we've got we've got everything you need to come down, wind off, relax, and have an absolutely good time experience. Um, Africa's I think Africa's biggest freshwater game that you can go after locally. Also during the time of uh, Bosnian safaris and the team, this is also my first tiger. This is awesome. So after a few days of hard hunting, uh, we decided that it might be a good idea to take a break for the afternoon. So we're enjoying the tiger fishing out here in the eastern part of Mpumalanga in South Africa. And uh, it seems that we're having a pretty good time. The fish are biting. Um, everybody's been hooked already. So it's been a good afternoon so far. So we are really having a great time here with the Borsnau Safaris team. Brendan and his dad, Hannes, has really gone out of their way to make this a real great episode for us. Not only are we doing big game hunting, we're doing big game fishing. We're going after the tigers here in, here in South Africa. So it's, it's a real great opportunity they're giving us now right here on their, on their doorstep. Where you normally had to go to a different country to do something like this, Borschnell can offer you this experience right here in South Africa. So whether you're on, whether you're on a safari or, you, or a local hunter, get in contact with Brendan and Hannes to book this great experience with him. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my first tiger. <laughs> not the not the biggest tiger fish in the world, but we're on the scoreboard officially, so we can only get bigger from here. So let's put him back. When uh, when you when you first said we're gonna hunt a croc, that's something that you wear on your foot, or on your shoes. You make shoes of a croc. That was basically my idea of hunting a croc. So yeah, I was excited at first, and uh, then reality came closer and closer. When the day uh, we need to start packing all the stuff, took my trusty old uh, 300 Win Mac. I thought, you know, if I do have the opportunity, I'm going to use the opportunity. I don't want to swim and I'm like a hippo in any way. Once I get into the water, I need to go to the bottom. I can't float. So, <laughs> yeah, that was the story. So we start packing and the rest. So arriving on the farm, I can't even remember the name. Once you get into your car, 
going on a hunting trip, you know, you leave a lot of stuff at home. And what I left at home was the business, the wife and the one uh, while I brought my son. But uh, stopping on the farm, the very first thing that I noticed is there was a little pond in front of us and the water was running out of the pond quite clear. But I thought to myself, okay, this is not really a hunt, but I mean, the pond, I can jump over it, man. It was, so somebody's going to put in a crock there and from then things will happen. But uh, man, was I amazed. So we started, uh, Brendan took us, wonderful guy. You can look over him, he's, uh, he's, he's about two meters tall. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we started walking down. He said, no, there's another small pond just down the hill. And so the journey began. Mr. Niku, in general, crocodile hunting takes a, a lot of scouting. Um, so we have a fairly good idea of where a decent animal is. Uh, hopefully, if we stalk in now, we can get lucky. Okay. It's the right time of the year, the right time of the day. So hopefully we get one out sunbathing and get a decent shot on its neck. Are you ready? Let's make it happen. We started the journey in a normal dirt road in an African farm the gun over the shoulder, walking, kicking some stones on our way to one of the dams, apparently. Was I amazed when we just went over, saw, it wasn't a hill, but you know, when I first got a glance of the dam, the pond became like a sea in the bushveld. Man, it was a big thing. I'm familiar with hectares and acres and stuff like that, so it was in the region of three, four, five hectares, maybe the dam. And then it struck me, I'm on a crocodile hunt, it's wild, it's real, and I knew my 50 yards won't do it. It took a while for us to get close to the water. All of a sudden, Brendan just stopped. And he said, Wim, are you ready? I said, ready for what? Are we swimming? And he said, look behind the bush. There was bushes all over, so how do you look behind what bush? I got a glance of some fallen tree that was lying behind some bush there. And then you realize, my heart, you know, at first you think, I'm 54 years old. Uh, this, you know, it's uh, just one more. But when I saw it's really a croc, I had to figure out what side was the head and what side was the tail. You see him, Mr. Nico? Yes, I do. Just, just get on the sticks. Use your skull, just get on the sticks. Just get behind you. I see him. You see the mouth? Yeah. The open mouth? Yeah. Between that open mouth and his leg in the middle of the neck. Yeah. And at that stage, I think what became clear to me is 
you don't think. Then, only then you realize that you've got more than one senses and that's the hearing sense. All of a sudden, you're hearing, you're smelling, you become your senses. And I, and I know I've got one shot because I cannot swim and I don't expect anybody to go into that dam, which is a couple of hectares, to go find something that I made a mistake on. Reload, reload, just shoot again. Shoot again. Reload. Reload again. Hit him again. Nice say. Right, come on. And I took the first shot, and he prepped me if if I've got a good encounter in my first shot, his tail will start wagging like he's excited. It was a good shot. His tail started wagging. And I thought this done. And he said, "Yeah, well, it's only the beginning. Now you need to take another shot." So I knew, okay, this is this is a better hunt, not just one bullet. So we ended up taking four shots from different angles. Experience. It was incredible. I'm here with uh, Brennan from Boschnal Safaris. It is an excellent, excellent company that really makes dreams come true. I'm happy, Brennan. I'm really happy. Thank you for the opportunity. And man, I might even use you again. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Mr. Nico. Good shooting. Thank you. A couple Thank of you. follow up shots. Yeah, but, thanks. Uh, crocodile hunting. It's not easy. And uh, we need to put in those, those insurance shots. So. Congratulations. That was wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Good job, Mr. Nico. Good shooting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tough critters. <laughs> um, something that you that you put away in here. And that's that's the truth. You describe it to somebody else. You need to come with. No, you can't. So I got an opportunity to hunt with Johan from Antic here at Boschnell Safaris. Um, uh, actually my dad, had to, uh, or he had the opportunity to shoot a crocodile and then he offered one to me also. He said, do you want to? We've got an opportunity. It wasn't uh, something I ever thought about, but I couldn't let the opportunity pass by. Um, and uh, well, I spoke to Brendan from, Bros uh, from Bosnell and uh, I asked if it's fine if I give my 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor test and uh, I did some research and I loaded really good um, specific rounds for this hunt um, so that I know I have enough um, impact uh, when I kill. I know it's a, it's a quite tough animal. Um, so yeah, and uh, we prepared quite well for the hunt, uh, me and my dad, and it was an absolute privilege to, to come with my dad, uh, specifically to, to, to support him when he shot his crocodile and then Obviously, it was this is this is beyond me um, uh, at this stage of my life to have opportunity to shoot a crocodile. We hear a lot of stories about uh, tamed um, crocodiles being hunted in small puddles, <laughs> uh, but when we came here and uh, we shot my dad's crocodile, and we were on our way to to uh, another dam where there's also um, crocodiles in, I realized this is this is not a this is not a quick hunt where you walk up to a puddle, see a crocodile and shoot it. This is the real deal. We just finished up uh, with Esther's dad's crocodile. Um, we're scouting a different area. Hopefully we get lucky on another croc. We know there's a lot around. Um, so it's just stalking in. We've got, we've got good wind. So hopefully we get one outside of the water. Also sunbathing, good clear shot on the neck. Esther, you wanna, you wanna tell us about what um. you're using? I'm shooting today, I'm shooting the 6.5 Creedmoor from Ruger uh, with hand-loaded Norma Oryx 156 grain bullets. 
So hopefully we, we, we uh, recover a couple of bullets and see what they did. We actually had to stalk the dam uh, to make sure that there isn't, there's the, I didn't knew this, but there's a lot of things around the crocodile hunt, uh, other animals that the crocodiles observe if they run away or birds fly or they knew if, um, when the crocodiles see or hear something, they get frightened, they go into the water. We obviously want the crocodile outside of the water because going into the water would be next level of dangerous. Um, as we approached the, the, the bank of the dam, uh, Brandon spotted a big, nice crocodile, long tail, a big head. Um, okay. It's 130 meters. We might get out in the front where it's a little bit flat and open, so you can set up the bipods and shoot from the stomach. Okay. Um, we're going to move about another 50, 50 yards or so, and then we'll get on our stomach. As we lay there, I had the choice to shoot from shooting sticks or lie in prone position. Um, I choose the prone position, it is just a bit more stable and I know shooting a crocodile takes a quite precise shot to spine him. I can see what I can't, I can't see with his front and back. Can you, his head's off to the right. Alright. Do you see the top of his head? Do you see those purple flowers? Yes, I see. That's where his hind leg is. Is that behind leg or front leg? That's his hind leg. Okay. You need to go more to the right. Let's go. Let's just move forward. There in prone position, I confirmed with Brendan uh, the distance of the of the shot. Um, he said 83 meters, um, and uh, well, I took the shot um, uh, where he guided me precisely. Where it was, it's quite hard to see exactly where the vitals are, where the the, the specific position is, where you have to spine the crocodile. Um, I took the shot. I took a little bit long with the second shot, the follow-up shot. He told me take a follow-up shot just for insurance. Um, and uh, I took the uh, took a follow-up shot, but then he was already on his way into the water. 83 meters. Okay. Reload, reload, reload. Behind the head, behind the head, quickly. Behind the head. Just above that, a little bit higher. Get him in the body, on the back, before he goes into the water. 
Uh, we picked everything up, ran around the dam, which was quite a run. <laughs> um, when we uh, when we arrived at where the crocodile was lying, he was in the water. We could see bits and pieces. He coming up for air, coming up for air, going into the dam, coming out, going into the dam. Um, and uh, uh, he gave me uh, well. It, this is it's in the heat of the moment. I, I took another shot. <sighs> And then it was in God's hands. So you, I couldn't do anything more. We can't go into the water. There's other crocodiles. We literally see bubbles and movement in the water of other crocodiles. They are they are aware there's something happening now. Um, then it was in God's hands. I prayed. My dad prayed. It was. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then we waited, we waited and he, he swam around, swam around. I was on the rifle the whole time. Let's see, maybe I can get another shot, maybe I can get another shot. So, and then a miracle happened. The, the crocodile turned around, he was swimming around. It doesn't look like he's going anywhere. And then he just turned around and he went straight for the bank of the, or for the side of the dam. And, uh, and when he, this, this is incredible, that crocodile, um, but I couldn't see him until he stuck his um, nose out of the water on the edge of the dam. And uh, when he stuck his head out again, I gave him a final shot and uh, it, it gave me, yeah, uh, it was close, it was pretty close, it was really hard to see. I tried first to look through my scope, to scope which was that I couldn't see anything and then I had to shoot from over my rifle and, uh, and uh, luckily it was close and luckily the, the shot went exactly where it should have went and, uh, and we, me and Brendan could um, get into the water and take it out. We had a little bit of excitement yet, Bosnia Safaris, uh, after the first shots. I couldn't believe a, a, a crocodile can take that many shots. Um, by the grace of God, luckily, came to the side and I had another shot. And uh, by the grace of God, we got him. Uh, this was, this is nothing I've, it's nothing like I've imagined it would be. And uh, it was a hard racing experience for me. Over the last couple of days, we've witnessed four completely different crocodile hunts in four completely different areas. And every single time, it's produced an absolute giant, which just goes to show why we feel that this is one of the premier destinations in South Africa to hunt these large reptiles. From moving in close to the bow and getting set up in a prone position where we actually have to flip up the bipods and get Aster in a position where he literally has to take a fine little shot across the pond. It's so diverse and so difficult you just never know what you can expect. Witnessing this with Johan and Beulah that share everything together and then Aster and Mr. Niku, a father and son combo, um, to me as a PH and an outfit it, it's something special because you share in all of these raw emotions. Um, the excitement, the thrill, you know, the disappointment, because it does happen. And what really stood out for me in the last couple of days was being able to offer something that is pretty much unmatched in this country. For Beulah to set out and go on this archery crocodile hunt just goes to show how exceptionally unique not only this area but this operation is because to do this within all legal boundaries and still get a permit um, is unheard of. For more information, make sure to visit our website page at www.bashnalsafaris.co.za or to keep up with us, make sure to follow us on social media, on Instagram or Facebook under Bashnal Safaris. To watch Huntex episodes or to find out more about their sponsors and destinations, visit their website and find them on social media.